Hello everyone. Um, I figured with a climate change session, we always talk about how do we make climate change relevant to voters, was mentioned earlier, and, and the public. So I figured, what the heck, let's talk about that. Uh, so I, um, I'm with Citizen, the Coastal and Intertidal Zone Archaeological Network. Um, and uh, we have been running for three and a half years, uh, working with members of the public, <coughs> pardon me, working with members of the public around England, um, looking at coastal um, and river archaeology. So here's some of our happy go lucky volunteers. Now we sort of uh, have got a lot of context actually for the UK uh, with the last few speakers, so that's been excellent. But uh, just to give you an idea about uh, climate change in the UK as it stands, uh, you can say climate change <laughs> in the UK for a start, so that's quite useful. Um, this is a recent study, study from the government. Uh, they did a survey. Um, so they have a public attitude tracker for climate change. So uh, at least recently, 74% of people have said they're fairly or very concerned about climate change. So that's a pretty positive start um, for what we're dealing, uh, what we're dealing with. Um, however, I should highlight that it's this sort of awareness of climate change, or at least concern, is highest among sort of the higher social classes, A, B, um, and less so among those who have other pressing concerns to worry about, basically paying the bills, et cetera. However, um, usually these types of folks, um, lower, the lower social economic, economic uh, groups are more likely to be affected uh, by climate change. And on the coast, um, it's a very, very big population, um, sort of high areas of deprivation. So, um, so something we need to think about uh, when we're uh, working with people. Um, but uh, yeah, so the, the most vulnerable people will be um, the least likely to be able to adapt to um, climate change. Anyway, some contextualization for you. So this summer, we were thinking, how, let's see what people actually think of when they think of the seaside, because uh, at least in the UK, we're in a little island. Um, so people always think about seaside um, as being obviously the sea, but um, kind of the beach and leisure and uh, history, old buildings and shipwrecks were very low down. <laughs> on people's uh, thought process. Um, and uh, we, we threw in climate change and uh, sea level rise and erosion, and again, quite low down as well. So that gives us an idea of where, we're, where we are baseline-wise. And that is why a big part of our project is raising awareness um, about archaeology on the coast and about climate change. And it's pretty fun. <laughs> um, but uh, just give you a little example of sort of the types of things that we are raising awareness of. It's, uh, we use examples like past sea level rise. So here's a pet level, it's a sort of a root system from an old forest there. And so intertidal archeologists can see stuff like this and we go, oh, well, you know, forest, that's exciting. Um, but for most people, it looks like sticks in the mud. <laughs> so how do you get people enthused about sticks in the mud? Well, let me tell you what. <laughs> Sorry, I can go back if you want. Uh, we use um, this is, uh, artist reconstructions of the site. Um, that's really helpful for people to get an idea of why recording archaeology in these um, environments is important um, and helps them to see what we would see when we're down there. Um, and it's got a little deer in it, which is quite cute. Um, but we also tap into local flood memory, so we don't just tell people. What, what, you know, why they should care about it. They know, <laughs> they remember the 53 flood, uh, which um, was really damaging to the East Coast. Um, so these trees here were, uh, the, the seawall was breached and it was left to be a salt marsh. But you can see, well, this one in the front here, that was from the 53 flood as well. So it was left to go to salt marsh. And uh, so you can see these submerged forests in action here. Um, so these would turn into those little sticks in the mud that we look at, but you know, much later. So it kind of helps to tie in modern climate change and things you can see to what we look in the past. And you can see them all here in the back. There's all little trees all there too. Um, but doing, doing is what gets people excited about climate change or interested and in, you know, why do they care about it? It's by seeing there and being in a different landscape. Um, so these are some school kids we took out to pet level as well. Um, and they thought it was great. 
because they got to be muddy and jump in puddles and have a great time, but you know, with some secret learning as well. <laughs> so, um, so we were out there recording um, some of these trees and recording where the branches were as well, because then you can see with the forest with the manager, etc. Um, but it's that act of doing that um, that makes things relevant um, to people's lives. So uh, we work with local communities. This is in Mersey Island, so we're, um, we're out with some of the local island residents um, carrying out environmental sampling. Um, but it's all about working with citizen science. Uh, so working with people using their local knowledge um, because their interpretations of this stuff will be better than we can tell them. Um, and uh, as, as highlighted before, um, this is based on um, Sharp's app as well. So we have a smartphone app which is kind of giving people the tools uh, to record using that local knowledge. Um, so then they can have a GPS and things I'll talk about in a little bit. I'm in another paper in the session, so I'll skip that. Um, but it's about that involvement, so it's, it's valuing people's knowledge. It's not just talking at them. Um, and contextualizing. So I was just gonna flag up here that we have uh, 2,500 registered users of the app but only 166 people have actually done anything with it uh, because a lot of people are actually just using it as a guided walk for themselves. So um, it's kind of contextualizing the coast and hopefully that seaside perception test that I highlighted earlier will start filling in those gaps um, instead of it just being about beach chairs and ice cream, which is also great. Um, but uh, it, again, telling people how, something new to look at, kind of using archaeology as a as a tool to entice people to the coast, and then they start seeing um, erosion, and it's, it's sort of highlighted here in these condition surveys. So a little example. Um, so for the UK, at least, um, what we have to think about with climate change impacts is um, uh, more fierce storms, rising sea levels, a lot of uh, water and runoff, um, and increased rainfall. Anyway, so this is a coastal erosion example here. This is in the 70s. Um, down at Berlin Gap in East Sussex. So lovely chalky cliffs. Um, you can see here um, a little line in the chalk. Um, it's actually a 40 meter long uh, Bronze Age shaft. You can see the hand holds carved into it. Um, so before my time, I didn't get to see it, but you can see the little folks on the beach here for scale. So it's kind of tiny. Um, and it was only visible for about five years, um, and then it was gone. So it slowly eroded back and uh, is no more. And so we thought uh, a couple years ago, well, what the heck, um, if the coast if it keeps eroding back, maybe we can find the bottom of this thing out there somewhere. Um, so some of our volunteers out there uh, were really enthused about it, as you would be if you saw these pictures as well. Um, and so they're out there every day, wandering out on the cliffs, uh, on, on the uh, wave cut platform below. Um, and in 2016, voila. Um, and they're all looking pretty pumped about it, obviously. <laughs> so they're very excited. Um, so we went back to, actually went back to um, excavate the bottom to see if we could find any um, remains at the bottom of it. And it was about uh, 28 centimeters deep. <laughs> so so not, not much coming out of there. But it was very exciting nonetheless. And actually, it's a, a good way of using Archaeology is a proxy for coastal erosion and coastal change because people can then see, oh, well, in the photos in 1976, it was the coast edge and now it is not. Um, and you, then you can start working your way back. But it's a way of using a fixed point, which is archaeology, um, uh, to tell a story about climate change and coastal change. That's a little quote about, again, seeing that urgency. Um, and uh, enthusing people in different ways is using the media. So uh, we're, we're, we're no strangers there. Um, and archaeology is exciting. And people in the UK, luckily, um, are really excited about archaeology. So <laughs> that's, that, that helps for us. Um, but uh, yeah, using the media is a very big um, part of that. And also in channeling that energy using uh, social media as well uh, to sort of get people involved. Um, so we were, yeah, again, highlighting the app on the TV show. So here's a humble brag about me being on TV. But um, so again, highlighting that tool that people can use to then um, uh, looking, so that they can monitor uh, the coast themselves. Um, hooray. 
Um, but another thing to flag up is that sense of place. So that's been mentioned before. Um, when you're uh, working with local people um, on the coast, uh, they're going to bring their own uh, flavor to things, which is great. Um, so this is some, some uh, young people we were working with um, in Hull. Um, so teaching them how to use the app, sort of digital engagement. So making it interesting, because it's just old buildings that they weren't terribly bothered about. Um, but uh, when we said that we could take pictures of things on the app and uh, condition survey, they were kind of into it. But they started taking pictures their own way. So um, they're taking selfies with every <laughs> bit of heritage that they could find, which is it's pretty cool, because that's their value of their heritage. Um, and again, making, it, making old stuff interesting. Um, and they, they're really, yeah, loving it. Uh, so I'm going to cut it short, actually, because <laughs> I'm talking later. But uh, making climate change relevant, um, we, uh, we did a course of evaluation through our project as well. And we're asking people if they had learned something about erosion or coastal change. And at least 75% of people who came to our outreach events um, did pick up on the message. So, uh, so that's good news for us, I think. And, but good news for um, coastal heritage as well. Um, and most of those people at Outreach would then come to a training event too, so that's, that's good for us. Um, but I'm gonna cut it short. So, Changing Attitudes is about galvanizing the community, and that's me done. So, thank you. Thank you.